So I was going to put a carving video out this week, but I just needed a little bit more fine tuning. So you can expect that next week. One more challenge accepted. Until then, let me fill you in on what's going on here. I've been painting and soundproofing the studio to get ready for some upcoming projects. And I've just started listening to Serial. No spoilers. I know I'm late to the game, but no spoilers, please. Um, just got some new headphones. Some Meze wood paneled headphones. Which are pretty adorable. They match my wooden case on my phone. I'm going full wood. Listening to Fantasy. Listening to The Great Hunt. But yeah, I'm feeling very accessorized right now as a wood carver. So starting now, I'm going to start answering questions that I find in the YouTube comments in the vlog. And I have a few that are printed out. Eric Cabrera asked, if you don't mind me asking, when do you work? Do you work every day or work when you have a cool project to do and wait for the next project? As much as I have fun every day for the most part, I do work every day and I work every night, though I'm not always carving. Actually, I should carve more. I spend a lot of time doing video stuff, editing, doing admin stuff, doing store stuff, doing web stuff. Like, There's a lot of time that goes into all of the other directions because I'm a very small business. I think I'm gonna have to do a lot of different things at the same time, probably forever. Um, but yeah, I do work constantly, though it's not always carving and it's not always art, it's a lot of times it's the business stuff. Amber Sephiroth wrote, I love the Wheel of Time books. I have a tattoo of the wheel and snake symbol. Any chance of you carving that? I would be very interested in carving something from the Wheel of Time. I don't know, I'm gonna have to see, I guess, where my loyalties lie with characters. JP Maynard wrote, Griffin, I have a question. I myself am an artist and a mother. How do you balance your time between the two, especially in summer? I always have trouble doing it all, keeping the house clean, kids entertained, and making sure I have my time to create. Being an artistic person, I need to work on things, but something always seems to fall through the loop. That is a very serious question, and I actually don't have a really great answer for you. The answer is, I have a lot of help. In 2015, I've been away from home for about two months, doing carving trips and that kind of thing. I'm very fortunate to have a husband that is equally committed to this whole parenthood thing with me, and who has who has been kind enough to let me just go do my own thing and take over running the house without me. Chelsea also has been helping our family in a million ways, mostly with taking care of Millie, but also she has been lately helping me with the business, keeping track of the email, keeping track of the Patreon, everything. So I have a lot of help. Um, secondly, I'm not great at keeping my house clean and I usually make it messier than it needs to be. Sorry, Jeff. Um, and thirdly, if I didn't have the help, I don't think that I don't know that I would keep my kid entertained. I think I would make her work. I guess I haven't really been the perfect selfless mom changing my entire life around my kid. I think that we've kind of expected her to come along with us and tag along. And there's some really great things that come out of that. She is essentially job shadowing at a very young age. And actually she does have a job. She makes videos and is learning the difference between having fun for yourself and working to entertain other people and thinking about what the viewer might want to see. She's also learned how to be quiet in meetings. She's learned how to work hard outside in the sun. So I guess my answer is there's probably not a way for you to keep progressing as an artist without having a little bit of selfishness creep in, but I think there are ways that you can make it work for the family, especially if you have a family that's on board for it. Good luck. Applecore360 asked, hey Griffin, how did you start carving? If I may ask, it doesn't seem like something you just pick up like that. I'm gonna just answer that by linking you to my group video, which I kind of answered a lot of those questions already. So instead of being redundant, I'll just send you the link. Go watch the video. Drea Algul said, this is so inspiring. Is there any way to get into wood carving without starting off with a chainsaw? I don't know anything about power tools, but I think I could get into this type of art. I can understand that you wouldn't want to start immediately with the chainsaw. And not only is it a little bit intimidating, um, it's kind of more of an upfront investment and larger so you need more space and everything. So if you want to start with some small wood carving, if you can find a woodcraft store that sells like chunks of basswood, that's a good way to start. Maybe get yourself a Dremel or some other kind of rotary tool like that that has bits you can change in and out. Last one, Jacob Beckman asks, what was that tattoo on the back of her neck? I'm assuming my neck and it is, the Griffin from Alice in Wonderland. It might be all one big black blob now because I'm not always great at that sunscreen. It was my second tattoo and I got it when I was 21 in Oregon. Thanks, that was fun. 
If you have a question for me, just leave it in any of the video's comments and I will try to answer it in these vlogs. Also, if you have a challenge for me, just send a video request to info at griffinramsey.com. You can also message me on Twitter at griffinramsey, though I will say that video requests are prioritized. Hint. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I'm not going to say it, but thanks. I'll see you next week.